your vision in every dimension. Hey, this is Mia with Design. In today's video, we'll explore the latest update to Design's 3D models on Canvas feature. Now you can upload your 3D models, precisely arrange object angles, and set the perfect foundation for stunning AI-generated images. No 3D modeling skills are required. This update gives you more control and flexibility to lock in your structure and composition, ensuring consistent and stylized results every time. Let's dive in and see how it works. On the dashboard, let's create a new project. Select a proper aspect ratio, and let's get started. First step is that we want to prepare the 3D objects we are going to include in our images. We can create our own 3D models from scratch, download pre-made models from 3D assets platforms, or you can even generate a 3D model from an image directly in design. To create a 3D model from an image, just place the image on the canvas. While selecting the image, you'll see a 3D icon at the top. Click it to convert the image into a 3D model. If the image has a background, design will prompt you to remove it first. And then we can choose the mesh complexity, texture size, and file type for our 3D model. If you're new to 3D modeling, here's a simple way to think about it. For mesh complexity, imagine your 3D object is built with Lego bricks. The more bricks you use, the more detailed it becomes. But it also requires more resources. Texture size is like the stickers and patches on your Lego character. It adds colors and details to make it more realistic. And different file formats work for different purposes. For this workflow, I think a GOB file is good enough since we only need a rough model that's small and efficient. Once we've made the selection, click Generate to create the 3D model. After processing, the model will appear in the result panel. Let's take a look at what we got. It's incredible how easy it is to create a 3D model from just an image. This shape is exactly how I imagined the image would look in 3D. But now that I'm looking at it, is this really a satellite? Let me do a quick Google search. Maybe it's more like a spaceship. If scientific accuracy is important, we might want to download a satellite model from a 3D asset library instead. But if we like the look of this one, we can go ahead and download it for the next step. So here I removed the elements in the layer to get a clean canvas. You'll notice now that we can upload not just the image file, but also 3D models directly onto the canvas. Let's start by uploading our 3D models. I'm adding an astronaut and a satellite I downloaded. We can also bring in 2D image references like this planet I created using a text to image tool. I, I removed the background since we only need the sphere shape to represent the planet. And also I added the starry background. To control which elements appear on top or behind others, we can use the layer panel on the side. Simply drag and rearrange the layers to adjust their order and create the desired composition. Notice how the satellite panel blends into the background and it isn't as visible. When placing objects, it's best to use contrasting colors to make sure that they don't merge into each other. If elements are too similar in color, the AI may have trouble distinguishing them, which can lead to unintended blending and a loss of detail. Once the 3D model is selected, you'll see a yellow bounding box appear around it. We can then click and drag to reposition the object. Adjust the yellow box to scale the object. And in the middle, you'll see an orbiting icon, where if you hover over, you'll see the round arrow. And if you click and drag near the field, you can adjust the angle and orientation of the object. Also, we can switch between texture mode and mesh mode, depending on whether we want to reference a model with textures or just its wireframe mesh. We can also adjust the focal length of the 3D model to modify perspective and depth. These options just give you different ways of reference the 3D model so you have more control over how everything fits together in your scene. Now let's arrange everything on the canvas to match our vision. Now we're happy with the composition, we can generate the final image using the size image to image tool. 
Click the image to image tool and choose the style that matches the look you want. I'm choosing realistic for this one. For the text prompt, we could write a detailed description ourselves, but I prefer letting the AI do some of the heavy lifting. Click describe the canvas. These I will then analyze your setup and suggest a starting prompt. It's usually pretty good, but sometimes it may miss something. Like it's missing the planet here. I, I guess it's not very obvious that it's a planet in AI's eyes. I suggest always tweaking it a bit to get exactly what you want. Next, on the structure match, it controls how closely the AI sticks to your original composition. Sliding it to the right means a tighter match to your layout. Sliding it to the left gives the AI more creative freedom. Color match is pretty straightforward. It makes sure that the generated image keeps the same color tones as your canvas. And it also helps reinforce the structure. We can turn it on in this case. Face match keeps facial features consistent. But since we don't have a face here, we'll skip this. Let's turn on high quality to enhance the details. In the advanced setting, we can add what we don't want to see in the negative prompts. Use the C number to generate similar results if we want to recreate the previous generation. All right, everything is set. Click generate and let design work its magic. We can hold the compare button to see how the generated image aligns with the original structure. By applying the same method with different compositions, we can easily create a space adventure story with different scenes. It's amazing to see how much creative freedom we now have with AI-generated images. Precise controls like these really put us back in the driver's seat, so we can bring our creative visions to life. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Try it yourself with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy creating!